Viri Paradox brings us five new melee weapons to choose from and oh boy there is going to be some timestamps for this video if you just want to check out a particular weapon search beneath click on the point of your choice other than that we're lining these weapons up alphabetical order starting off with drifter first and then what it looks like on warframe melee seconds and trying to keep the information as short and as sweet as possible to get just straight to the point ultimately how you use the weapon is your choice up first the two-handed nakana azathane on drifter azathane actually looks really good it feels good and it even sounds good it should go without saying that the crees that you earn throughout the very paradox runs are going to give you a lot of melee selections to enhance all of these weapons so they scale great even in steel path the power fantasy is real as the thing's power spike, the special heavy attack, it sends out a few waves of cold which can proc onto enemies slowing them down, giving it some nice AoE in combat. On Warframe, as a thing's special heavy attack creates an AoE around you, it sends out like a shockwave that if it hits anything within line of sight, gives combo counter to your weapon. Overall, it's a decent weapon. With the current slash meta within Warframe, focusing on a build with this weapon for heavy attack really gives off that one powerful shot connection. Modded for damage, criticals, wind up mods, faction mods for double dipping, and an elemental combination of your choice. This is what I would lean towards. Coming in next, the two-handed scythe, Eden. On Drifter, it feels really good. I like the normal heavy attack that it provides. Good quick animation with a nice flow of comboing damage to follow it. The power spike, special heavy attack, it knocks down enemies in front of you, giving some decent crowd control if enemies are overwhelming you. Now, for me, I would actually pick this choice if I was focusing on Drifter gameplay and a little bit of everything, but mostly centering my attention to the close combat type playstyle. On Warframe, Edan, in my opinion, isn't great, but it isn't exactly bad. It's comparable to the likes of Orphus Prime, so you know it's not bad, but it's got a little bit more base critical, and that's mostly about it. My opinion here stems down to the fact that the special heavy attack with the Warframe combat, it throws Eden into the enemies, and the damage is underwhelming to say the least. It could be used for crowd control if that suits you, and I have modded it similar to the typical scaling hybrid melee that is going around. The usual status damage scaling mod of condition overload, some reach for added quality of life, some scaling critical, scaling status chance, and viral elemental combination to com complement the innate slash on the weapon. All in all, I would personally use Eden more on my Drifter than I would on my Warframes personally, but again, guys, it's just my preference. Swiftly moving into the two-handed hammer, Sampotes. On Drifter, I used this weapon a lot at the beginning and I can personally say that I enjoyed it. It does have some slow, sluggish movement to it, but the power spike, the special heavy attack it provides, can tremor outwards some heat damage with, I believe, the potential of heat procs for that extra added damage added on top. It's personally a good choice for those big boys who like to swing. On Warframe, Sampotes can be summed up to me as a bit of a trolley weapon. Due to the scalar meta of how Warframe is in its current state, yada yada yada, hammers can pack a punch, but inevitably, at, the, at a particular time, the unstoppable force meets the immovable object. And that is where the hammer tends to fall off in scale and damage. This isn't the reason why I find it trolly though. That's more due to the special heavy attack that it brings. If you jump into the air and you slam into the ground, it scatters enemies all over the place. And although this is fun, this can interrupt teammates who are looking to group enemies together for better quality of life nuking. And the hammer does, doesn't really pack a tremendous amount of damage whilst doing this. It just causes chaos. But hey, if you like chaos, then go for it. For the mods, I went with an efficiency heavy build up build. So this ramps up combo attacks until max capacity and then I unleash one devastating normal heavy attack to hopefully destroy whatever problem I have in front of me and with the efficiency I should be able to build up my combo again nice and quick. By all means guys if you do have a better suggestion of a build here then please let me know because I would like to go and give the hammer a bit more of a better review personally. Also a friendly reminder at this point in the video if you are enjoying it hit that like button and subscribe for future videos. Up next we got the two-handed dual Nakanas Sun and Moon. On Drifter, clean, sharp, fun. I love the movement and the animation these weapons give off and honestly I'm not going to complain if we get more Nakanas coming our way after this introduction. I mean even the name is dope. 
What kind of other names can you guys think of for some new Nakanas if they were released? Anyways, the Power Spike, the special heavy attack, it sends out two projectiles slash like blades slowly splitting off from one another the further that it travels. When it connects with an enemy, it sends out electric damage and I believe also electric procs as well. This weapon is a better choice if someone is looking for a melee, but with some ranged playstyle added to it. On Warframe, Sun and Moon doesn't really have a special heavy attack unlike the other weapons provided within Daviri, at least I haven't found it. But what it does bring us is a new stance mod for these new dual Nikanas and combinations flow like water. I absolutely adore this weapon. Even if I personally do not think it's the strongest melee out there, it's just extremely fun to use. As for my modding, again, I went with the usual scale and hybrid melee builds. Condition overload, scale and critical, status, fire as elemental, with some quality of life and utility in between. It holds up pretty well. And again, this weapon to me is more about the fun of actually using it than the efficiency of the weapon. So overall, it's a massive thumbs up from me. Arguably the best for last, the one-handed Nikana Siam. On Drifter, this might be my personal favorite. It's clean, precise, and simple to use. With the Nikana playstyle, it makes me feel like a ninja, even without my Warframe. But where it excels for my Drifter, in my opinion, is the Power Spike, the special heavy attack that it delivers. A double spin in slash with easy control and close combat is good against enemies standing in your way. I don't really have any bad complaints and no, nothing further to go and say on this. It's good and it's really good. Let's just move on. On Warframe, all right, at first I overlooked this. It's in the Kana, it's Slash, it's Meta. You'll see a theme going in here. It will scale with normal hybrid builds. It will most probably have a heavy attack with innate Slash. Oh, it doesn't? Okay, so we took a deeper dive. The heavy attack on Warframes sends out a slashing projectile, which can also deliver heat damage to enemies. I mean, that already sounded good, but even with a heavy attack build catered around this within mind, I found it to ju just be okay. Until I jumped on my Mirage and I looked at this weapon the same way that I would look at the Warfan, Quasis, Clones, Warcry, Eclipse, grouping up enemies and oh my God. The Siam can deliver truly great damage, melting enemies when enhanced by Warframes that can power up your weapon's damage output. These will be things like Rhino's Roar, Vault Shield, Mirage's Eclipse, and the list goes on. Siam to me won my heart from the selection that we were provided. On screen is the build that I went with, focusing on that heavy attack that we just talked about, but mostly because it's a different playstyle to majority in the canners that I would mod for. Again, you could just go for the typical hybrid build, which is still good, but it's always nice to have that diversity. I am sure you might wonder at this point, where is that build for Mirage? But that's for another day. If that does interest you, give the video some love and let me know. If it generates, I don't know, a couple of hundred likes, I may get around to posting the build if this video gets enough attention. So that's going to be my quick review of the Diviri Paradox weapons. I think that they are really good addition to the game and I like the different playstyles that they each provide, even with the Drifter or even with the Warframe. But what is your favorite weapon out of all of them so far and why? Now, I want to thank you guys for checking out today's video. And if you did find this useful, share the video with a friend. But as always, guys, you can find me over at my live stream. And until the next video, I will be seeing you guys later.